welcome to this video. Uh, what I want to do is have a look at what a red dwarf star is. So if you're familiar with the HR diagram, we have this band across the middle as a diagonal, which is the main sequence, where hydrogen fusion is occurring in the stars in the central core, and it's the main evolutionary phase of the star. If you're not familiar with HR diagrams and stars on them, you can check out the video at the top. But the sun sits approximately midway through, the larger stars sit towards the upper left, and the, the lower mass stars sit towards the, the lower right. Now, the, the bigger the star, the hotter the surface temperature and the higher the luminosity. So as they get smaller, they become less luminous and the surface temperature decreases. Now, red dwarf stars are main sequence stars, but they just sit at the lower end of the main sequence. So they sit right at the bottom end. They're red because they have a low surface temperature and they're not very luminous because they're not very big. And to give you a bit of an idea on their size, the smallest ones are typically only just bigger than Jupiter, really. So about 20% larger than Jupiter's the smallest red dwarf stars. But they still have a very large mass, so about 100 times the mass of Jupiter, which means that the gravitational force from the star is still able to heat that internal core to a point that the hydrogen fusion can occur, which doesn't happen in the planets. The planets just don't have the mass there to get the temperatures up in the core, whereas these low mass stars just at that limit really. Now about two-thirds of all stars are thought to be red dwarfs in the universe, so the vast majority of all stars are going to be red dwarfs. Very small percentage of them are actually the larger stars, like the big blue stars, there's not that many of them about. The vast majority of stars are red dwarf stars. Now they're also the longest living stars, so in the centre there, we've got the, the Crab Nebula, which is a supernova remnant from a very large star. Now the large stars, they, they grow quite big and they will have a very short life before they go supernova and explode. Red dwarf stars don't do that. They actually survive for a very long period of time and just happily sit there while all the other stars around them are just exploding. Um, and the reason for that is that they're... Um, convection in their centre is their whole is it encompasses the whole star really. The larger stars, only their central core is convective. So that means that the energy transport internally is only in the centre part. So only the hydrogen in the centre is going to get fused into helium. So you've only got like a, a small proportion of the star which is able to generate energy in these larger stars. With red dwarf stars, they're fully convective, so the whole star gets mixed down to the core, so all of that hydrogen is able to be fused into helium. So the, as a proportion of the whole star, they have more fuel available to them, so they just keep on going. And that's the main difference as to why they last a little bit longer as well than the bigger stars. And then when that's all done and they've depleted all of their hydrogen, then they will contract down to a white dwarf. And these are about the size of a planet, and as they contract down, that gravitational force actually heats them up a little bit more so they get hotter, which is why they actually appear to be white. Um, now, you think that because we have a lot of red dwarf stars in the universe, and so there's a lot of them about, um, they live for a very long period of time, that they would be good places to look for habitable planets. And you may be right, we have found a reasonable amount of planets in the habitable zone around red dwarf stars for that very reason, actually. But are they really habitable? Well, here you've got three types of star and where their habitable zone would be. So the habitable zone around the star is the distance it needs to be to have liquid water on its surface, to have the right temperature. Now, for cooler stars, it's actually got to be really close to the star. So the green region here is the habitable zone. And you'll note that compared to the larger stars above it, it's very close to its star. So in order for a planet to be habitable, it's got to be close. Now there's, there's two things that are basically a problem with that. It, one is tidal locking. So when you have a planet very close to its star, it runs the potential of being tidally locked. So that means one face of the planet is always going to be facing the star. So you no longer have days and nights anymore. Now that is what's happened to the moon. When you look up at the moon every night, you're always looking at the same face. It's tidally locked to the earth. So as it 
rotates on its axis and it orbits, they have the same period. So it means that one face is always facing towards the Earth. And in red dwarf stars, they're likely to be tidally locked because they have to be quite close to their star. And then finally, and this is a flare from the sun, but if you're closer to the star, then you're going to get hit by these flares. So these red dwarf stars typically have very large flares to their relative size. They're quite small, so they have relatively large flares for their size. And if you've got planets very close to that star, they're going to get hit by these flares and they can be quite catastrophic for life on them. So yes, we can find habitable planets around these red, red dwarf stars. And we found quite a lot. We've actually found multiple planets in the same system which could be habitable. So there's a few issues that might actually prevent life from thriving in these locations, which is worth thinking about. So thank you for watching.